donation. Glad you've been watching for a couple years and thanks for participating in another way, my friend. With that, let's get this next run rolling. That's right, it's time for Rolled Out Challenge Warps on PC with Helix. The stage is yours. Oh, it's so good to be back in person. Let's go. In my own state, too, it's low-key been a dream of mine to do a GDQ run in Minnesota. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm Helix. As you could tell, I have a friend here. Hello. Hi, I'm Peter. Uh, I'm, uh, you can find me. I'm Peter Sink. <laughs> yeah, the username on screen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm here to assist Helix in talking about this awesome game. We, we had a battle at AGDQ. And now we're working together. That's right. Rivals became friends. It's, it's quite a story arc since the last time we've been seen here. Sorry, please excuse any sniffles. Um, yeah, this is rolled out. This game is an indie marble roller created by some awesome people that went into early access March of last year. It is still in early access. Keep that in mind, although it does play incredibly well. I promise. Um, so this game has a lot of customization options. You can customize, like, you know, shape of your ball. Purely aesthetic, by the way, doesn't have any collision differences. Mm -hmm. uh, customize the color of it. But most importantly, I understand there was a character bid war between all six of these friends. But it's time to choose one. Who's the winner? The winner is, with $571, Rook the Field Unit. Woo. Bye. Um, fun fact, this is the only character in the game who canonically uses she or her pronouns. Everyone else uses they, them. Uh, this, this character was created by Video Chess, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, pretty neat addition to the roster. Excited to use Rook. I will be playing through the challenge course in arcade mode that has 75 stages. We'll be playing 71, and I'll get it into why we're only playing 71 during the run. Don't think there's anything else to say. Without further ado. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I do have a problem. I'm really bad at counting, so I'm, I'm going to need some help from you all. Get loud, by the way. I love it when the audience is in it, so. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. We, we're back on site. We got we to gotta kick up the hype. Ooh. So, from five, four, three. three two, one, go. That, was, that was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so the first thing you're going to see me do is move diagonally. That's because this game... What? Yeah, okay, this looks good. That's because this game pulls inputs in a square. Diagonals are farthest away from the center because of the square format, meaning they are the strongest inputs. So, therefore, we accelerate faster when using diagonals. Um, there's also a little thing called wall boosting, which I'll let Peter explain. Mm -hmm. Like with regular boosting, wall boosting is the same, but involves a wall. Um, in this game, uh, friction, which you might be familiar with from real life, is a force that makes it so that you uh, do go slower when you're rubbing up against surfaces. So we use walls to get a little bit airborne while accelerating, which makes us accelerate much, much faster, which we'll see a great example of actually on this very stage. Watch out here. Beautiful. Beauty. An 80.5 is really fast, by the way. That was really good. <laughs> we don't call it velocity for nothing. Mm -mm. Um, also, you saw some seeds, some seesaws. We got some sideways seesaws here, too. That was also really good. Excellent dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, this strat works because when you hit the outside of a seesaw, it moves really fast. When you hit uh, sort of the center of a seesaw, it doesn't move much at all, and you can bounce off of it. Pretty neat mechanic at play. There are also springs. We don't use them too much in this, this category, but they do exist. I'm going to go for a bit of a skip here on adapter. Mm, this one requires a lot of speed building. Mm. See if we can skip this layer. Ooh, wow. Just barely. <laughs> Very clean. I'm going to go for the IL strat here on rollers. Ooh. IL meaning individual level. Very risky. Looks awesome. Beauty. Yeah, shout out to the individual level community. Um, you can do individual level speed runs of this game, and plenty of people do. The community is extremely active. Lots, you know, lots of people just getting together, trying to push each level as far as it can go, and I have a lot of respect for their dedication. Mm -hmm. um, well, Even really? Shamana, Steinix, 42. There, there are so many of you, and I can't possibly shout out all of you, but I have a lot of respect for you for you all. Oh, yeah. What really helps, too, is that the game itself has built-in uh, in-game IL leaderboards. They're turned off right now, but on any stage you open up, you can see who has the best time and try for yourself to be on the leaderboards so you can be shown in-game, which is a pretty cool motivator for getting into individual level speedruns. Mm -hmm. And you can check out these leaderboards if you're not in-game at scores.rolledoutgame.com, I believe. 
So, back to the game. This is the first strat that I'm using the minimap on. It's in the bottom right corner of your screen. I hope that lineup's good. Looks pretty good. So if I did this right, I will not have to touch this bridge again. Whoa, <laughs> I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they're very sensitive at the edge of the seesaw, so yeah, if you hit that are. in a weird corner, you're just going to knock it totally out of whack. I was worried that was going to happen. Oh, this might be different in the other... Or this might be poor in the other way. Looking pretty good. You got this. Let's, let's see. Let's find out. Fine setup. Uh, Looks fine. Good. Last one's scary. Yes, okay. You yeah, took that, that last one that can really trip you up. <laughs> Beautiful. So you might be wondering, you know, Helix, I see the minimap, and I also see the speedometer above the minimap. What's that little blue bar about? That is focus mode. Um, collecting coins fills that little gauge. Um, we'll talk more in depth about focus mode later. I'm not going to use it for like 50 levels or so. <laughs> not terribly important right now, but it will be. All right, not to, not to like put you on the spot or anything, but when you said blue bar, I, my mind was blown because I see that bar and it looks it's, totally it's, green. It is more of a green, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Are you it's ready? Turquoise, I don't know, aqua. That's a good compromise. Yeah. I like, I like colors. I like how we have one name for a lot of different colors. Like blue covers a whole bunch of different colors. I'm getting sidetracked. This is canister. <laughs> there are springs here, and every button I press will also raise the ceiling eventually revealing the goal. But there's something really important, a really important mechanic that I mentioned in my interview that is coming up next. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the very next stage we'll be entering the virtual reality world, a very beautiful world, but it does feature gravity platforms. When you touch these platforms, your gravity changes permanently until you die, beat the stage, or touch another gravity platform, mm -hmm. as you can see right there. Now hold on to your hats. Ready, set, roll. Excellent you thought, you thought that was cool, just wait. Ready, set, get rolling. <laughs> there was a whole stage there that you just fell past. I love showing that off. <laughs> Roll. Um, you can also sort of orbit around gravity platforms, and I'm going to use that. Oh, uh, interesting bonk. Well, that's fine. <laughs> oh, no. Uh -oh. The cycles. Help. <laughs> it makes sense. That was a transparent uh, wall, so it's pretty hard to see. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you can bonk into that one. <laughs> I was using that to build some speed and go for some cycles. Are you ready? Um, you might have noticed that the goal in this virtual reality world is different than the goal in Tranquility. Every world in this game has its own unique goal shape. Um, this one, as you've seen, you can enter from pretty much anywhere. There are no goalposts to worry about. Nothing you can bonk off of, really. Uh, and that is super duper helpful for a lot of these gravity-focused strats. Yeah, you can usually expect in this game that the uh, harder and more brain-bending the level design is, the easier it is to enter the goal. So, you know, you have a lot of different options on how you want to succeed at the stage. <laughs> Nailed it. I love that every time. That's one of the hardest stages on the run, by the way. <laughs> I just, took, just took it at full speed. No problem. You're, you, oh, I, I never take that full speed, too. I'm always impressed that you do that. It's, it definitely trips me up on occasion. Uh, this is one of the oldest skips in the game. Ooh, Thank that's the, a classic. Yeah, that stage has been around forever. Are you ready? Uh, so coming up Whoa. next is Pop Quiz, level 25. This rat's pretty neat, too. Slow down here. There we go. Finish. So, Pop Quiz. I'm going to be doing a specific setup here to flip Are off of the ready? corner of a platform and Get lose all of my speed to land safely. <laughs> Almost. Almost hit it. Yeah, hitting that edge just enough so it sends you straight up instead of to your doom is actually quite tight. There we go. And then use this gravity platform to just fall oh. right into the goal. <laughs> and that is the end of virtual reality. We're now into desert ruins. Um, the stage coming up after this will be Holy Ascension. There's an important skip on it. Save like eight seconds total, I believe. Clear. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back at the start. I think the only stage I go back on. Uh, no, one of two. Gain some speed, clip off here, and then just manage my speed all the way to the goal. Nice. Saves quite a bit of time. Uh, with that, we have some time for any messages from the host um, up through level 34. I made sure to take a note, but before I take over fully, do you happen to know what our challenges we're currently raising money for are? Our challenge. Got the Please Mass Effect more. Mako Glitch Showcase and bonus game Pokemon Snap. If you had a thousand dollars to put towards those, what would you choose? Ooh. Oh, they're both so good, but I, I think I personally want to see some Pokemon Snap. Alrighty, then courtesy of DX Racer USA LLC, Ooh. we have a thousand dollars now going to Pokemon Snap. 
They say, always amazing to see everyone come together for such a great cause. We are astonished by the skills of all runners and are so excited for all the runs to come. Runner's choice for the incentive. Once again, that will be going towards the bonus game Pokemon Snap. And I see we're on 31, so I'm going to take over for a little bit more here. Here is $150 from Complex Plane saying, on behalf of myself, Twilight, Crafted Cart, and the rest of the Rolled Out development team, it's such an honor to see our funny rolling game showcased at the first IRL GDQ in three years. And by such a talented runner, no less. Best of luck on the run, Helix. I'm going to tear up. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, how about I throw another one on there? $250 from SkyMap Games. On behalf of the development team, congrats to Helix for playing at GDQ. We're proud to support Doctors Without Borders. Let's heal people and roll out! Okay, that was incredible. <laughs> Thank you both so much. Yeah, uh, the devs who worked on this game are super awesome people, very involved with the community, always receptive to any feedback. Mm -hmm. It's clear they are very, very passionate about this game. As are we, right, Peter? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. They, they share it more so than I've seen in many, many speedrunners because they, they kind of they come from, uh, you know, deep, passionate gaming communities like the ones we're in a part of now. So mm -hmm. the fact that they're making games now is just something that uh, it makes sense. Yes. The game's so good. So this stage is very large, but uh, you can just sort of do this. Wow. Some pyramid <laughs> of pain. <laughs> Not painful for me. Mm -mm. True. Uh, we are now moving into Foggy Mountain, which introduces uh, portals, holes, wormholes, whatever you want to call them. They work very similarly to portals from, well, Portal, and, which is really cool to have in a marble roller. It allows for a lot of creativity. Mm -hmm. You can even see through them and uh, you know look at the next part of the stage if you want to, which is uh, you know a lot like uh, cool Portal games, right? Mm -hmm. And here's wind. You can see it's pushing me upwards, sort of acting as low gravity. Nice weave. Thank you, thank you. you. There's a lot more wind here on tre Treacherous Trot going in a bunch of different directions. Forward, left, right. Wow. It's a good thing that the mm -hmm. uh, the wind volumes themselves are very consistent. They're uh, little zones you enter where the wind is always the same. The wind is pretty strong, but as long as you uh, you know counteract the forces, you stay on the stage. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Quite well. Start. Coming up next, we have uh, Dreamcatcher. I'm going to be going for another IL strat there. One of the more difficult strats in the run. Uh, you'll see why. The angle I get at the goal here is just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to go really wide around here, but we're going to try something uh, a little bit wacky. First wow! <laughs> and there's more where that came from. This strat's pretty cool, too. We can bonk off the middle here. Ooh. Go in the goal like this. Nice. On conservation, I'm going to, of course, build some speed here. And then uh, once I go up this ramp, I will pull back to reduce friction, get away from the wall a little bit, and then make it up in one cycle. Um, you might have noticed the wormholes there. You're supposed to go through them, build some speed. You don't need to. Um, here's yet another hard strat here. Foggy Mountain is full of them. Well, <laughs> that's, that was an interesting way to think. Yeah, I've never seen it like that exactly, so the points for the, the cool bonus never seen before. <laughs> Ever happened before? Question mark? Mm, maybe. Sure, why not? <laughs> if I haven't seen it, it hasn't happened. <laughs> Coming up after this stage, we have Four Square. Uh, one of the more difficult levels casually, has a lot of seesaws, a lot of portals. Clear. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter, in particular, really likes this level. Yeah, I like this level a lot. I, uh, a lot, I have, I have a pretty good time on this stage. Um, basically, you, oh, well, you're skipping the stage. With the yeah. wormholes. You yeah. forgot about the wormholes. No, it's OK. I don't need them. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, Peter has tied IO world record on that stage. Mm -hmm. Very fun one. This is Ice Caves. It introduces ice. Uh, you might remember what Peter said earlier in this run about how we don't want friction. Ice has very low friction. And so you can build up a lot of speed on it very quickly. I'm taking this a bit safe because I don't want to fly out of this. <laughs> yeah, too much speed, honestly. Yeah. With walls that big, you'd think you wouldn't be able to escape, but ice is uh, very fast, so watch mm -hmm. out. Ready, set, roll. Uh, Careful. Sweet. Perfect. Good maneuvering there. That strat's always a tad scary. So this is probably the most difficult strat in the run. Uh, and it uses ice to its full benefit. Yeah, perfect. Ah, not quite going to make it. <laughs> I need to get like a really good entrance. A little bit to, definite. To this crescent here. Oh, I don't know about this one. Could be. Oh, nah, not quite. Yeah, really pushing ice to its limit. This is where we want it to be low friction. I hit this first try in my world record. It is viable. It's just really hard. <laughs> 
don't know about this one either. I bounced a lot, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm, okay. Gotta make this entrance a little bit better. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Icicles! Come on now. Talk about breaking the ice, am I right? <laughs> uh, oh boy, I keep... Hmm. Oh, that would have been interesting. Start. You've got this. It's funny because the other strat is just as annoying. Remember the cues. Yes. That That's should gotta work. Be it. That's not it. Oh, I no. It. Oh, we're on top. Okay, hold on. This could be the hugest backup in the history of... And okay, that's. I don't. We don't think that's possible. <laughs> we don't think that's possible. It would be awesome, but we don't think that's a thing. What is with this strap? Come on now. I practiced you. Mm -hmm. That's how they get you. Honestly, I need to fall off earlier. I am uh, pushing this starting boost way too hard. See, this is much better. I keep doing my thing. What the heck, Crescents? Now you're seeing. The strat's hard. You're seeing why? Okay. Uh, those icicles. <laughs> yeah, those do have hitboxes. Yeah, those icicles did mean business. I, I knew I wasn't going to get there. Come on now. I mean, I played so well that this is fine. Like, my estimate's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so mean to me. Why are you so mean? I sure do. I let the ice win. Oh, wow. That was really loud. Heck yeah. That was a lot of support. Thank you. I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> lose your marbles? You're right. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> this is like the most annoying this has ever been. We are coming up to a spot in the ice zone uh, where uh, we can read some donations. Can we get that started right now? There we go. Oh, never mind. Right. <laughs> Took me long enough. Perfect. Took me long enough, but the most important thing is that you all got what you came to see. <laughs> um, Never give up. We can have some donations. Let's go. Well, let's start off with two important 50 marks, including $50 here from the one and only Hollow Hero that says, Hey, Helix, sorry I couldn't be there in person, but you can bet I'm counting the minutes until I can congratulate you IRL. Good luck, have fun, and I'm sending lots of love. Get rolling! I love you, too. That's... Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, you really want to make me try this run, don't you? <laughs> and with that, an important reminder, we passed $50,000! Woo! It's the amazing support of all of you in Twitch chat, as well as all of you in the live audience that's gotten us this far. Let's keep it going for the rest of the week, my friends. Mm -hmm. Here is $12 from Matt that says, Let's go, Helix. Everyone is so proud of you. Keep up the good work and get rolling. Get rolling. <laughs> get rolling. Thank you, friend. Thank you. Uh, on this next stage, Peel, I'm going to go for another IL strat. We saw what happened to me on Crescents. This one should go better. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Of course, that's a great way to jinx it. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Setting yourself up. I don't. Her. I didn't love. Yeah, I didn't love that alignment. <laughs> I fell off a bit early. This looks. That would have been really good had I not hit that platform. I just nudged the side of that platform. You got to be really careful on this one. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another IL strat. Lots of these are RTA viable. I do hit them in my world record. Uh, fun, fun fact about that is that when you're doing ILs, a lot of people on that strat will change the camera turn value to make the camera turn faster than usual. Um, and this game is... What? <laughs> Was that collision? <laughs> Game? Ooh, right in the middle of a seam right there. Sent to not in the direction you would expect, but... Can we talk about that backup, though? <laughs> yeah, he lived it. That save, though? Yeah, no, you didn't die after you got the yeah, most no, weird fine. collision I've ever seen. It's fine. <laughs> um, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. <laughs> this game has lots of awesome customization options. Um, you have pretty much... Not free reign over, like, where the camera points, but you, you can, you know, zoom it in, zoom it out, pan it up, down, um, do all that in the settings. Also, check out this new strat that Peter found about three hours ago in the practice room. Mm -hmm. Neutral until just after tick to 52. And then 50.7. Yes? All right. Yeah! <laughs> you know, first time that strat has ever been performed in an RTA run. <laughs> you, you credit me on the strat, so, you know, like, my, my whole reputation was actually hinging on the, that because, you know, it's not even you getting it, it's me who made it. I got All you. Right, I got strat. you. See, it was my Thank fault goodness. on Crescents, but I got you. Um, 
Speaking of warp goals, that was a warp goal, a red goal that skipped two stages. This will be a green goal on Archway that will skip one. That Crescent was also a green goal. I didn't even mention it. Uh, I'm going to use focus mode here to make sure my alignment's good. Oh, this might not go in. Yes, it did. Okay. Bye. So, you may have seen focus mode makes the game go in slow motion and also has a nice little trajectory visualizer, which is very helpful. Also, this strat's pretty funny. Boop, right through the wall. And we're into the goal. Uh, and we are already fast approaching the end of this run. There are 10 stages to go. I held up a five because, you know, normally I would have held up both hands, but I had to have one on the controller. <laughs> That's, yep. Mm -hmm, good. Well, <laughs> round it up. That's fine. Um, also, this game has some really cool accessibility options as well. Um, one thing I like is that you can dim the backgrounds a little bit if they're too bright for you, which is pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can get lost in the settings in this game, actually. Uh, you can play in first-person mode if you want to do the opposite of accessibility if you want to get sick. Uh, you can use top-down perspectives, you know, all kinds of incredible things if you want to have some fun. Yeah. First-person mode, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, you can pretty much make the camera do that. Yep. That's how much freedom you get. Nice. Okay. Um, this is another one where the IL would use a higher camera turn value. We're just going to turn right around. Oh, nope. I hit the top of the goal. That's a new one. Let's talk about too much turn. Yeah, right? There we go. Clear. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. They're just That's a few levels left. Yeah. Um, this stage used to be in the standard course, which is the course easier than this one. And it's quite difficult casually, but I just nailed it. Yeah, which is <laughs> super funny that it ended up being uh, in a later difficulty. Just the fact that people had to open up a difficulty that was supposed to be easy and then just, uh, whoops, mm -hmm. saves really hard. Um, another new strat that I found somewhat recently saves like 0.3-ish. Just because you start falling earlier. Um, there are four levels remaining. I counted right. <laughs> Remember, I told you all I don't know how to count very well. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Also, big shout outs to the audience for being able to keep up with the pace of this. I mean, you have to clap, and then like, yeah. another level happens, and there's already another thing to clap for. So, this stage is really know, fun. On and off like that. Really well done, everyone. Uh, OK. I think I can bounce here. Are we still going? Yeah, nice. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Cycle skip here on platforms. Nailed it. Just got to get the last one. There we go. Close. All right, nice. final level coming up. Time will be when I enter the goal on this stage. Are and it's ready? a doozy. Look how massive this level is. <laughs> it's quite an entry, too. We'll, we'll be saying and, but the time will confirm that we actually finish the stage because this mm -hmm. one's tough as well. You, you know we're skipping it. Check this out. OK. That's a really high bounce. Focus mode, help. Uh, and time. <laughs> what a satisfying ending. <laughs> It's, it's so satisfying. The best stage to end it on. Um, wow, thank you all so much. So this would be my final time. We do time this game in game time. Does not count like longer loads or anything, um, which is very, very cool. Uh, it even has milliseconds on it. Pretty neat. Mm. Uh, we've got some shout outs. I'll try to go really fast. I do need to bring up the notes on my phone to make sure I get to everything. Come on, come on. <laughs> OK, yes, this is rolled out. It is, an early, it is in early access right now. You can get the game on Steam for $20. Highly recommend it. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It has a great community there. It is consistently updated. There's an update coming out very, very, very soon. Um, and another update coming in the future that will add online multiplayer. There are also more levels being added, stuff like that. Um, hop in there, Discord. Go to rolledoutgame.com. Check the Discord. Um, you know, a bunch of speedrunners are in there, happy to help you learn this game if that's what you're into. There's also the custom level community found there. There's a very robust custom level community for this game, constantly making new levels. So if you get bored with a base 250 or so, you can add more community-created levels. Yeah, hundreds of stages to select from. Yeah, mm -hmm. really, you, can't, you can't run out, really. And something that's really important to the devs is that the core libraries uh, that this physics engine runs on uh, are being made open source. You can check out twitter.com slash rolledout. Or uh, I'm sure there will be information about it um, in the coming days on their website, rolledoutgame.com. It's something that's really important to them, and I think it's really neat too. And finally, uh, two more things. Shout out to Midwest Speed Fest. Heck yeah. <laughs> that's my group, my marathon that I help out with. Um, and if you liked this run, you can follow me pretty much everywhere. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, even TikTok sometimes at Helix13 underscore. Uh, I stream Marble Rollers all the time, like this game. 
Super Monkey Ball. Uh, I've been getting into a new one called Polygon, which is really cool. Uh, and Peter, check right. yourself out too. Thank you so much for helping me out on commentary. Hey, no problem. Uh, yeah, you, you can also find me everywhere at the uh, username below, Peter Sink. Yeah, I'm Peter. You'll see me around doing lots of cool Marble Roller and other speedruns. Totally different mm -hmm. ones as well. Yeah. This thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. This was an absolute blitz. Thank you to GDQ staff, volunteers, and thank you everybody in the audience for all the support. I appreciate you. It's really an honor. I hope you all had as much of a ball with that run as I did, my friends. Let's give Helix another hand for that run. And speaking of so many amazing devs on this game, I have $77 donation here from Twilight that says, what game is this? It looks weird. Can you play Fortnite instead? Just kidding. Thanks to the genius Helix13 underscore for somehow tricking the GDQ staff into putting my little marble roller on stage before we even finish making it. Shoutouts to Crafted Cart, Complex Plane, Neil, and the rest of the folks who have contributed to the game over the last few years. It'd be nothing without y'all. Here's the future updates, a great run for the crowd, and of course, for Doctors with Without Borders. And with that, we're going to take a moment here, get to yourself some water, get a good stretch in, and we'll be back right after this. Welcome back, my friends. We also have a special word here from some of our sponsors I'd like to take us to, starting with Red Bull. Yes, Red Bull. <laughs> Red Bull gives you wings. Cult of the Lamb looks so amazing. I really can't wait to play that game. 
while I have a moment here, here's $15 from Crafted Cart, who we've heard mentioned a couple times. I still find it hard to believe something that started as just a hobby for me a few years ago has made it here to GDQ. I want to get a, a big, big kudos to everyone who's helped make this game possible. Twilight PB for the level and overall game design, Complex Plane, who, without which, the physics would not have been this tight. The Bomb Squad and Craft Spider for helping me out with some of the code and tooling. Bacon. Virix Dreamcore and Chime Ratio for the music and sounds, and the team over at SkyMap for helping with the art and odd bits here and there. It's been a phenomenal, if hectic, journey, and we've still got a long way to go. Trans rights! I'd like to hear that. Oh, look at that. It seems we're ready for the next interview for Kirby and Forgotten Land. This is with Kung Fu Fruit Cup and Mr. Shasta. Take it away, my friends. Hello, hello, Kung Fu Fruit Cup here. And yes, I am joined by Mr. Shasta, getting ready to do the upcoming Kirby in the Forgotten Land run. And I'm so excited. I have all my Kirby gear on. We have our wonderful and kind of horrifying Kirby art. Poor Elphalin. Poor Elphalin. Um, <laughs> how's it going, Shasta? <laughs> going very well. Thank you for asking. Good. You just finished your WarioWare run, and it was awesome. Congratulations on that. You thank did a you, wonderful thank job. You. Yes, of course. Um, but now we're going to get into some Kirby stuff. So uh, I wanted to start by asking... First and foremost, we have this awesome hammer super jump skip, right? That yep. we use all throughout the run. And so are you going to be attempting Leon skip in this run? I will be attempting it, yes. Let's it, go. <laughs> it's the hardest skip of the entire run. You have a one frame window that gets the right amount of height that you need, essentially. And mm -hmm. there's, like a, there's like a hole in the ceiling that you get through. If you don't get, if you don't get the first try, it's really, really, really hard to back it up properly. Yeah. Because the boss just moves around at that point. Yeah. Or it's like a kissing set up like the very start of the fight. So if you don't get a first try, will you then just fight Leon and just not try again? Or will nope, you... I'm going to keep doing it. Okay, great. Okay, we're, <laughs> we're going to We're going until we get it. Yeah. Let's go. So this, yeah, again, this, this um, jump is used all throughout the run. It's just super cool. So you need to make sure you check that out. Mm -hmm. Would you say that that is the thing that you are maybe the most nervous about coming up in the run? Leon skip for sure, I'd say. There's a few other things here and there, just like feeling little strats here and there. And like mm -hmm. that's some boss strats, they're really cool that I want to show off, especially on the big stage like this. But okay. we'll see what happens, of course. Okay. Like which? Like give me which boss would you say? Uh, I'd say Tropic okay. Woods. We actually okay. fight Powerless while juggling Tornado. It's really awesome. Yes. Yeah. You have to like definitely go back and forth. That that's a, that's a definitely a tough thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So then around this run, like how would you say the community has come together to help develop it? Because I know it's been like a group <coughs> effort. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's been a. There's been a lot of people just coming in and out throughout the whole thing. There's been people documenting like different routes and different uh, like all all different categories in the game. Mm -hmm. A lot a lot of people are new to the community. Uh, Shouts like Tordex and Bomb Happy, for instance, who uh, really contributed a lot to the run over, over time. Dark Yellow 27 as well, who uh, I've known from for running like Dreamline 3 and being really good at that game in the past. He also came in for the, to this game and he's been destroying it. He's oh. found a lot of strats. And like just done a lot of things for the run. Yes, yeah, absolutely. There, it's been a, it's been really active. Like this is a very active, very active game right now, and it's so fun because Kirby games are so great um, in general. In I want. I oh, agreed. I want to see on Spoon.com. Like the only game that the only Kirby game that has more runners in this one right now is, is Dreamland, which has like 400. <laughs> oh right, okay, but you know I think it'll catch up in time. Eventually, for sure. yeah. Def it's, it's such a good run. Yes, agreed. It really is. It's just a very smooth, fun run to do. I, I've been hyping it up. It's it's worth the hype. Trust me. Yes, seriously. It's, so then, how would you say that this like compares to other Kirby games that you've run because you've run a whole gamut of Kirby games mm -hmm. uh, among another like bunch of games like we've just seen WarioWare you've done like Metroid stuff like so how does it compare with other Kirby ones? I think it's up there in general <laughs> amongst some of my favorites the only downside is there is a good amount of downtime between levels but that's really like about it yeah like it's really really fun I'm really happy how the game turned out as a whole I think the only like one or two runs I've done the past of Kirby like maybe I rank it. Like, okay. Superstar Ultra is my favorite Kirby game in general, and I uh, Superstar Ultra 100 is like the, the category I started running at that game back in 2014. Now I've record at like <laughs> almost less than two hours. It's wow. really cool. That's like my favorite run of all the Kirby series, I think. But this one is like. It's it's up there, I think. <laughs> it's it's close. It's getting closer to it every day. That's great. Well, with the amount of ones that you actually run, I would say that's a, a very good like two thumbs up mm -hmm. um, kind of rating for it. So absolutely. Yeah, I'd yeah. Do three, if I could. <laughs> yes, three thumbs up. Three. Th here, I'll add your extra thumb. There we right. go. Okay. <laughs> 
Four thumbs up? Four thumbs up? Four yeah. Thumbs up. Anyway, I love the game. Um, Same. So I wanted to uh, throw in a few Twitter questions here for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Because some people are asking some great questions. So, for example, we have um, at uh, My Euro Lover uh, wants to know, what's your favorite power-up or evolved power-up in the game? My favorite power-up overall is Fire. It's just very versatile and fun overall in the game. And my very favorite evolved power-up is actually Space Ranger. Space Ranger. Yeah. I love Space Ranger. <laughs> it's just fun. Yes. I wish it, it's not used in any of the runs, but Space Ranger is just a really fun power cast. Right. I love it a lot. Yes. And I think, I mean, they give you the, the very, very final one that you can get, like the level four sword, basically, <laughs> is like so cool. It's so good. It's so cool. And it has so many amazing little things you can do with it that you, if you mess around with the movement, but... You know, it's not really useful for a speed run because you have to do like everything to get it. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So moving on, um, at Mana Hive asks, is there any trick or glitch in Forgotten Land not currently used in any category that you hope gets implemented somehow? There's a really hard and consistent trick called uh, mouthful storage. Essentially, you get hurt it's like on the very first frame that you suck in uh, a mouthful power or a mm. ability. It's I don't think it'll be useful anywhere in general at the, like, at the end of the day, but it'd be really cool to see that at some points. It is, like, really hard to consistent, like I said. It's, it's, there's no visual cue for it. You just got to do it and hope that you get it. Interesting. But it allows you to keep a mouthful of power, like, later on to a level. It's really awesome. Whoa. That was found back in the demo of the game, by the way, before the game even fully released. I actually did not realize that. Like, I have yeah. not seen that, so I definitely need to check that out and just see. Yeah, it's really cool when those things, like, potentially become viable for runs because then it's a whole new world. And with this being a new game, we already have, like, some cool skips and things, but... This game has advanced a lot in the last yes. few months. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. So really cool to see it, like, already being featured at a GDQ, and I know it mm -hmm. will change. Um, last thing before I let you go, because I know that you want to get set up, but we have uh, from at Benja uh, G-A-W says, what's your favorite boss? Um, Fair Boss is actually the final boss. That whole mm -hmm. fight, the entire sequence is just incredibly epic and fun. Yes, plus it really the music is great. Music is so yeah. good. I have, I have a whole thing I can say about this music, but you got to wait for my run for that one. Yes, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. My only comment about this because I know we got to go, but the music goes so hard in this game. Oh, it's so, so good. good. It's not as many like reused tracks either. It's all a lot of original stuff. It's, yes. that's kind of unique to the Kirby series. It's, yeah, it goes it goes in. It's really good. It's beautiful. Well, <laughs> please check out this run. It is coming up very soon. Um, after the next run, it's going to be amazing. Um, thanks for chatting, Mr. Shaw. So I will see you there. I'll be hosting free runs. So, you know. Heck yeah. Let's you got to deal with me again. But that's okay because this is going to be super fun. Thank you so much for joining us um, to chat for the run and uh, stick around and check it out. What a great interview. I, I can say my favorite part of the volunteer badges is I've got a cute little elf lid on there. So I'm very hyped for this run. I've watched so many people play through it, but I've held off on watching any speed runs of Kirby in the Forgotten Land, specifically so I could go in the first time seeing it here at GDQ. Now, I have a $150 donation here from Mr. Dan S. Light that says, I need that mail.